determining the formula of a hydrate. Hydrate ionic compounds. Many ionic compounds crystallize from a water solution with water molecules incorporated into their crystal structure, forming something called a hydrate. We've looked at nomenclature of hydrates in the chemistry unit, okay, that I have uh, posted online. Uh, so, and hydrates have a specific number of water molecules chemically bonded to each one of the formulas. And what you're gonna see is, you're gonna have some kind of an ionic compound, and you're gonna have that dot, and X number of H2O associated with that. And we're gonna see what this means. All this means is we have X number of water molecules that are weakly bonded to this ionic compound, okay, to these formula units. And we, whenever we use the, the term formula units here, as we say here, a chemist may know the formula of an ionic um, part, but may be required to identify how many water molecules are present for each formula unit. Whenever you see formula units, we are always referring to something that is ionic. Ionic or ionic polyatomic. Okay, and you'll see that in a second. So, Epsom salt, NgSO4 dot 7H2O, commonly used as a bath salt. Okay, so what we have is for every formula unit of magnesium sulfite, we have seven molecules of water that are weakly bonded to it. So what that means is this dot doesn't mean multiplication like we've seen in math classes. It just means that we have a total of seven molecules of water that are weakly bonded, associated to this formula unit, okay? We know it's a formula unit because we're made up of magnesium ions and sulfate ions, okay? So these are what we call the formula units. Compounds that have no water molecules associated into them are called anhydrous to distinguish them from the hydrated form. So you have your regular ionic and then you have your hydrated ones, okay? So here we have magnesium sulfate. So this is considered, so if you ever see this in your notes, it just means an anhydrous magnesium sulfate. It means that there is no water, okay? No water associated with these molecules. But then when we have some MgSO4, 7 H2, uh, H2O, we have what we call the hydrated form of this magnesium sulfate, but it's a magnesium sulfate, hepta, meaning seven, hydrate, meaning water. Let's look at the sample problem. Sample problem, a hydrate of barium hydroxide, Ba brackets OH, close brackets two, dot X H2O, is used to make barium salts and to prepare certain organic compounds. Since it reacts with CO2 from the air to yield barium carbonate, BaCO3, it must be stored in tightly stoppered bottles. So, part A says, a 50.0 gram sample of hydrate contains 27.2 grams of barium hydroxide. Calculate the percent by mass of water in the barium hydroxide dot X H2O. So what we're doing here is, well, what is the, the actual mass of the entire sample? Well, the whole sample is 50.0 grams, the total sample. The barium hydroxide consists of 27.2 grams. So if we take the total of the sample, we subtract it, by how much we know we have of the, um, of the actual ionic compound, of the formula unit, if we subtract these two, we are gonna get pretty much the actual mass of water. So we know that if, if we have, sorry, 27.2 grams of the barium hydroxide, we add it to what we've just calculated here of water, we're gonna get our 50.0 gram sample, okay? So, but the question doesn't ask us for that. It asks us to calculate the percentage, okay, by mass of water. So we, we need to do this calculation. And what we do is we're gonna take this 22.8 grams, that's water, 
and we're going to divide it by our complete sample. Okay? And our complete sample, when we divide these two together, we want to find the percent. So we're going to divide these two, and we're going to multiply it by 100. And we get a total of 45.6% is water. Okay. So 45.6% of this compound consists of water, and the remaining is that of barium hydroxide. So here we have the same sample problem. Okay. Only difference now is we are trying to find the value of x. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, what we want to do is we want to find out in pretty much in one mole of barium hydroxide, what is the ratio of moles of water? So we want to find out the actual number of moles. So how do we do that? Well, we're given the mass. We can actually find the molar mass. So as long as we have mass and the molar mass, we can use these two calculations to find out the number of moles we have of each. So what we're going to do is we're going to find okay, the number of moles okay, of barium hydroxide. So we take the mass of barium hydroxide and we divide it by the molar mass of barium hydroxide. And we get 171.3 grams per mole. Grams cancel out, and we've given a total of 0 0.159 moles of barium hydroxide. So we're going to do the same thing, but now we're trying to find the actual number of moles of water. So we're trying to find number of moles of water. So we calculated when we subtracted our 50 gram sample by 27.2 grams that we got 22.8 grams of water and we're going to divide it by the molar mass of water which is 18 uh, grams per mole and when we divide those two we get 1.27 moles of H2O. Okay, so we have now the formulas, and what we're going to do here is we're going to same reasoning as we've done with the empirical formula. We're going to divide this mole ratio by the lowest mole ratio. Because what we want to do is we said in one mole of barium hydroxide, how many moles of water are there. So we're going to divide this by the lowest because the lowest will give us the number of moles of barium being 1. So we're going to divide 1.27 moles by 0 0.159 moles. Okay, when we divide the two together, we are going to get a total of 8 H2O, which means that for every 1 mole of barium hydroxide, we're going to have 8 moles of H2O. So in the end, what is the actual formula for this? Well, the formula is BaOH2, 8H2O.